imagine with me for a moment that there, there's a young college student and uh, a CEO of, of a Fortune 500 company comes in and presents to the classroom as a special guest lecturer. And, and afterwards, this young student is dreaming of the power they could possess if they were a CEO. They're thinking about all the possessions they could buy, purchase if they were just the CEO. And never do they consider the long hours, the responsibility, the sacrifice, the weight of leadership that goes with that. Well, James and John are like that student. They're seeing the glory, but they do not understand the cost in which it comes. You know, you too might find yourself chasing after status. Maybe you're chasing after recognition. But Jesus calls us to something deeper. If you're a follower of his, and I I pray and hope that you are, but if you are, there's something more for us. And I I believe Jesus is going to show us what true greatness is all about. And it lies in service. It lies lies in sacrifice, in laying down our lives for others. So again, Mark chapter 10, look at that, that thought, 38 and 39. Jesus is going to challenge James and John after their question. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or to be baptized with the baptism for which I will be baptized? Now understand this. Two words there. This picture of a cup and this picture of baptism. By the way, two things that uh, the church as an institution, there's two ordinances that we follow with. Uh, one is observing the Lord's Supper, which we use the cup, right? And then the other is baptism, which uh, represents someone who's uh, placed their faith, their hope, their trust in Christ. But in, th- in this meaning, it's different. Okay, This thought of the cup in Scripture, it symbolizes suffering. So Jesus is saying to them, are, are you going to be able to suffer the way in which I'm about to suffer? And, and that's the thought. So Jesus is speaking of the judgment that God the Father is going to bring on sin. And Jesus knew that he was going to have to take on sin. Therefore, that judgment, that cup would be poured out on him. And then the second word that Jesus uses there is that of baptism. Now, Jesus began his earthly ministry by being baptized. He was baptized in the Jordan. And some of you have been there. Some of us have had the privilege of, of doing that uh, again. And not that that makes you special or uh, you know, more of a follower, but there's this symbolic moment that you were baptized close to where Jesus himself chose to be baptized. And yet Jesus was baptized in the waters of the Jordan, and yet Jesus knew that there were waters ahead of him, deeper and darker. It was the dark river of death. So there, Jesus would be identified with the sins of the world. It was there that he who knew no sin would become sin, would take on sin, and there, the Lord of life would taste of death for every single person who's ever lived. So two things to know about this. First of all, look on the screen. The cup spoke of the inward suffering that Jesus was going through. Some of you may remember that when Jesus was in the garden, that he began to pray and and that there there were drops of blood that came from him. And we know scientifically that someone can be so anxious that there can be such Uh, uh, trial and tribulation going on in someone's life, that that physically can happen. And so Jesus is, 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 is thinking about the suffering. And the baptism spoke of the outward suffering, where Scripture would reveal to us, and Josephus, that historian of that day, would write to us that his body would be unrecognizable. So there was an inward suffering that Jesus was going to go through, and there was an outward suffering that Jesus was going to go through. And so Jesus is going to challenge James and John as a reminder, and I believe also as a reminder for all of us, 
that following him comes at a cost. And, and, and I, I would ask that you would forgive pastors like myself and others for so many years. We just wanted Jesus to be so attractive that we failed to mention that following him comes at a cost. That Jesus says that you must count the cost before following him. Look at Luke 9, 23. If anyone would come after me, and by the way, there is not a better life that you can live. There is no one better that you can go after. But Jesus says, let them deny themselves, sacrifice themselves as Jesus sacrificed himself. Take up your cross, that is God's plan and purpose for your life, daily and follow after 